What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel and first please hit that subscribe button. We love it when you do that and today we're going to talk about how to hook a bowling ball on your local house shot. Stay tuned. So I am here to tell you about a sponsor of ours, our friends over at Bespoke Post. Bespoke is a monthly membership club delivering awesome boxes of top shelf goods from under the radar brands. It's totally free to join. The box lineup changes every month and each box has around $70 in value, but you only pay a fraction of the price. 90% of products come from small businesses, many of which are based here in the US. You only pay for what you want. Before the box ships, you get to confirm the box goods based on your quiz results. Now the three boxes that I have received are right here. They come in cool little boxes like this. The first one I'm gonna show you is the Weekender bag. And I'm actually getting ready to leave for a weekend trip right here. It's got all my clothes in it. It's really awesome. The box is called Weekender. Really good quality material. Snaps right here. Plenty of room to open up. The Weekender, great for travel on the weekend. We've got another box called the Chill. This is a cooler. A nice size cooler for you to travel with. I'm gonna throw some ice in here. I'm gonna throw my drinks and my fruit in here because I'm a fruit guy. And then of course, I got the cop kit. This is all my toiletries and everything right here. So if you guys are looking for your first month of product right here from Bespoke Post, make sure you hit that link in the description and hit enter code BK20. That's capital B, capital K. 20 and you'll receive 20% off your first month's subscription. So go get it. All right, so when we talk about proper ball motion on a house shot, a lot of people, so a lot of times it can be easy, but then it can just go away quickly. And a lot of people experience carry problems and uh, where they feel like it's still really close, but the transition is hit. And then they have some carry problems or their ball stops hooking. There's some problems that we can get into on a house shot, even though they're supposed to be easier. So Kyle, when we're talking about hand positions and how to throw a bowling ball and how to look at a lane, what do we got? Yeah, house shots can be finicky at times. You know, the beautiful thing and the hard thing about bowling is there's never one solution. There's never, I mean, we've done everything there is to do on a lane and there's still things that we're probably gonna do in the future. Like there's just so many options. But uh, one thing that I think people struggle on a house shot is maybe they'll start out really good, maybe shoot a nice game, but then they have carry issues and particularly those pesky corner pins, 10 pins for a right-hander and seven pins for a left-hander. It gets hard to carry as they transition. Well, there's usually a reason for that. The lanes are changing, so typically we need to do something different. Now, this normally happens when we start moving left and we can't get that ball to quite go into the pins, carry, save energy. And the reason this is a lot of times we're not adjusting our hand position to be able to carry as well as we want. Yes. A lot of people, they'll move and they'll make the adjustment. They see there's transition. They understand that they have to move, but when they move, they just throw it the exact same way. Now that's so easy to do because we have like a natural way of throwing it, right? And if you're not on top of it, or if you haven't bowled your whole life, sometimes it's hard to feel those little minute changes that you have to make. Even though it's a house shot and it's supposed to be harder, there's still a lot of things that we have to do that are hard to feel. Absolutely. And so you're going to teach us a couple of things that you go through and some of the feels that you go through. Now, hand positions, what you like to do is you like when you're hooking it to get around it. Right. Now, what exactly does that mean? So there's two things when the lane and the house shots start breaking down and I need to hook the ball basically into the pocket the right way. I'll either need to come up the back of it or most of the time I'll need to give the ball more, rot more rotation. So when we talk about coming up the back of it, and we've talked about this in if you've watched the video, some of you guys might already know, but I'm trying to release the ball right behind the ball. So I'm just really rolling the ball as we like to call it. A little more end over end, and my fingers are coming out right behind the bowling ball. Yeah, and it's almost like your pinky uh, finger is like on the other end of the ball. So if you get around it, your pinky finger is gonna be on the right side of the ball. When you're up the back, it's almost like the uh, left side or, or you know, the opposite side of the thumb is like tilted upwards. That'll help you a lot to actually get up the back of the ball. Yeah, and the cool, and we're gonna demonstrate here in a second, but we can create with the same bowling ball two completely different reactions. And I've had to do both of these when trying to combat the transition, move left, need to hook the lane because the ball's uh, 
you know, the lane's drying up. Sometimes I need to come up the back to control the lane and that'll give me the best carry. And sometimes I need to come around it. So it's important to do both. So we're gonna throw a shot here. And this one's gonna be up the back like we just talked about. This is a pretty burnt up house shot. I'm around 20 at the arrows. And we're just gonna try to stay a little more end over end. So you can kind of see how that ball got to the 40, two thirds of the way down there and it kind of just went forward. Very forward. Very yes. forward. So the times that we're gonna need to use that for me is if I, if the, I guess the ball is too uncontrollable down lane, meaning when it hits the friction, it is just sparking. So I want when the ball gets there to be a little more end over end so it's smoother down lane. And I would say most of the time when we're losing carry or the corner pins, there's too, I don't want to say there's too much angle, but the ball is coming behind the head pin and it's sending the three to the left side of the six and the six wraps around. When you get more of like a rollout, the three goes more into the six and the six actually hits the 10. It's not like whipping around it. Now when the ball comes in late, it could be too much skid and angle or it could just be uh, the ball rolled out way too early and then it actually didn't have enough um, uh, entry angle into the pocket. So there's a couple different ways that you could leave a 10 pin, but it happens all the time. Yeah, and you can see on that last shot, the six barely kicked the 10, the ball went forward. So we have to play what's out there on the lane. Like if you got it, and that's why it's important to try something because it's always not one solution. If the lane is gonna give that to me, and it's gonna, the six is just gonna keep chopping the 10, chopping the 10 and striking, I'll play that all day. I have no problem. I don't need my ball trucking through the pins every time. So it just depends. Now we're gonna talk about getting around it. So I'll do this a lot. Most house shot tournaments, I will end up giving more rotation. So for me, the way I like to do it is, instead of starting here where my hand is pretty up the back, I like to rotate my hand this way. What happens at the bottom is now my hand is, basically cocked, and this is personally how I like to do it, that at the bottom my hand will wrap around to the side. So I'll be here, and my hand is forced now to just wrap around to the side of it. So this is how I like to do it. I'll also maybe tuck my pinky sometimes too mm. to help my hand rotate around. That's like my extreme scenario. But either way we have to do it, we have to create rotation. And one way is getting our fingers a little more here. One way is starting on the side of the ball and our hand just needs to end up more on the side of the bowling ball to create more rotation, which will help that ball glide and save energy. Yeah, I wanna get, get in your position. I wanna call, talk about a couple different. So, uh, first things first, when we talk about getting up the back of the ball, the difference between getting around it can be the elbow right here. So when you're getting up the back of it, tucking your elbow way in and getting the ball to like lay on the pinky side of your hand, your palm, can help you get up the back. Now the difference between that and getting around it is the wrist. So elbow in, pinky side, up the back. Now when he wants to hook it, he's actually turning his wrist, like clock, like, uh, like a top, like it's actually just spinning like this. And that's the most normal way I've heard of anybody uh, wanting to hook the ball more. The best bowlers in the world, when they say, if you need more hook, just load more. Well, that's what load is, is you're, you're cocking your wrist to get it on the inside. That way when you release, it has no choice but to whip around the side of it. Yeah. So at the start, that's a couple different ways you can look at it is up the back, get your elbow in and keep it in, kind of forces you to fluff it forward. And then when you want to hook it and you turn your wrist, just turn your wrist. Don't get your elbow way out here. Yeah, we just don't. turn the wrist. Yeah, yeah. We don't want the fine elbow. So yeah. remember the last shot ball went really forward uh, barely kicked the 10. Not bad. If it's going to strike, I would surely play it. So now we're going to stay in, in the same spot, but I'm going to load that wrist and focus on, for me, my keys of giving this more rotation. And you can see the difference in entry angle right there. I mean, that ball was not like, it didn't hook, stop, roll out. It hooked 
and then it was like still spinning. <laughs> there, yeah. there was no roll out roll to it. It was like spinning as it went through the pins. Yeah, so typically what my normal process is gonna be is I like to stay a little more up the back of it. So I'm gonna probably go to that up the back of it release first. And if, unlike that first one, if it does keep leaving that temp in, I'm gonna start adding rotation. I think it's important to note that, you know, this is why we preach versatility is because I just had that same ball and it did two completely different things. Same ball. Same exact ball, same part of the lane. All we did is completely change the hand position. It one barely kicked the 10, still struck, and the other one went through the pin. So now I have a lot of room to play with keeping that same ball. Now, and he struck on both of them. A lot of times, he, you know, you would and that'll tell you which one you should use. Right now, it'll probably be a, actually, I know which one he would use, but when you're trial and erring and seeing which one, you, one's gonna work and one's not. And then it'll be so obvious, like, oh, thank goodness I actually practiced this because this is so much better than what I would normally be doing, you know, right. if, you're, if you're getting around it. But last thing before we go, I wanna mention, put, get in your setup again. Okay. And this is something I always thought about. When I always thought about getting around the ball, I always thought that I could just get my hand out here, right? I mean, if you're thinking about around it, well, it's your hand right now is not under it or on top of it. It is literally on the side of it. So when you're thinking about like rotation, I used to think like, well, I'll just keep my hand on the side and then that'll keep my hand on the side of it when I release it. But what happens is, is this is a very weak position. Yeah, your hand's on the side, but when it comes down and comes forward, you're almost going to like thumb down it and then almost miss it. There are times to kind of use this release, but I just always remember thinking like, well, why can't I just get around? It's because you're not loaded and it's weak. If you want to increase your rotation and hook the ball, you still have to get in a strong position when you get, uh, when your hand just gets on the side of it and there's nothing under it. There's no support and it's just totally a weak position. So when we talk about hand positions, like we said, you know, same ball, there's a lot of things you guys can do with like your favorite ball that maybe you haven't done before, which is like slow down, move left, load. Um, there's a lot of things we can do without necessarily changing the bowling ball on a house shot. All right, everyone, thank you for watching that video on house shot and hand positions. Kyle, it can always get really tricky. It's all trial and error. Sometimes they both work and that's when you go to whatever you feel most comfortable. But on house shots, you gotta be able to have some kind of versatility in your hand position or else there's just gonna be too many times where you start to lose carry and then you start to bowl bad because of it. Yeah, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Couldn't agree with Brad Moore. I use those two strategies all the time. All the and sometimes those don't work and I have to do something else. But, you know, we're always learning here. So thank you guys for watching the video. If you guys want tips like this on how to combat your local house shot, link in the description, our membership. We love all of our members. We appreciate everyone. The feedback's been amazing. If you guys want to be a part of it, just hit that link, and we'll see you guys later.